Hi friends, Pastor Doug Batchelor with Amazing Facts. We have a very important presentation today dealing with the subject, the mark of the beast. But we're not specifically going to be talking about the mark of the beast. We're going to be talking about a very common misunderstanding of where is the mark of the beast? What does it mean when it says the forehead or the hand? There are so many people that are deceived and confused about what this is. And I believe there are going to be millions of people lost in the last days because they don't understand what the Bible is talking about in Revelation when it says that the beast is going to place a mark in the forehead or the hand. You can even look in some Bible translations where it talks about they'll receive a tattoo and the popular media because it's connected with buying and selling. They think, well, maybe it's some super chip or credit card, or it's going to be a barcode that will be tattooed in the hand or the forehead, or it'll be one of those RFID implants that's going to be in the hand or in the head. I mean, after all, they're putting them in dogs today. So where is the mark of the beast? And what does it mean when it says in the forehead or the hand? Well, I thought I'd start with a little amazing fact. You know, amazing facts is famous for amazing facts. Back in 2005, there was a lady, her name was Carolyn Smith from Salt Lake City. She couldn't raise enough money to put her son in a private school. So she got the idea that she would auction off the space on her forehead to the highest bidder. She would tattoo whatever they wanted on her forehead for a price. Well, this got a lot of media attention. And finally, there was someone that made a bid. They offered her $10,000 to permanently tattoo their website. It was goldenpalace.com. And I don't know, but maybe she's still wearing that today. Auctioned off the space on her forehead. Sometimes when people think about the mark of the beast in the forehead, they think it's the number 666. doesn't say that anywhere in Revelation. 666 is to identify the man. It says it's the number of a man. And they maybe think it's a barcode or it's a computer chip in the forehead or in the hand. Let's read this from Revelation and it's going to help us better understand it. You'll find this, of course, in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 and 16. And I'm going from the New King James Version here. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. And at first glance, people are thinking, oh yeah, must be something visible on the outside. And I remember when the barcodes first came out years ago, my friend said, don't buy anything that's got the barcode on it. That's the mark of the beast. And I think those friends have probably all starved to death since then or changed their mind because it's on everything. That is not the mark of the beast. Or, you know, they think that uh, it's going to be uh, the number 666 or a tattoo. That is not the mark of the beast. What does it mean in the Bible? Let the Bible interpret the Bible. What does it mean when it says a mark in the forehead or in the hand? Look with me in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6. After God gives the Ten Commandments, he repeats them in Deuteronomy chapter 5. Then Moses summarizes in chapter 6. Of course, he says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. He goes on to say, And these words that I command you today shall be in your heart. Now, let's stop right here. When Moses says the word is to be in the heart, what does that mean? That they were to literally open up their chest and stuff a scroll with the Ten Commandments in their heart? No, it's clearly a symbol. It's a figure of speech. Go on then. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You will bind them as a sign on your hand, and they will be as frontlets between your eyes. Most of what you find in Revelation is a reference to the Old Testament. There are 404 verses in the book of Revelation. 278 of those verses can be found almost directly quoted from the Old Testament. So to understand what it means in the hand and in the forehead in Revelation, look at what it says in the Old Testament. Here it says, the law of God was to be in their hand or in their forehead, between their eyes. But wait, and there's more. Look in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 18. Therefore you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart, 
and in your soul and bind them for a sign on your hand and they will be as frontlets between your eyes in the forehead and in the hand represented in the actions and in the thoughts. The Bible talks about in Isaiah, it says wickedness was in their hands. It doesn't mean the hand, it meant their actions. Jesus said, if your right hand offends you, cut it off. He's not literally talking about cutting off your hand. It means something in your behavior, your actions. In the forehead means in your thoughts. The mark of the beast is not a tattoo. It is not physical. If you look, for instance, in the Greek, the word that's used in the Greek there in Revelation is the word harigma. And it really means engraved, etched, branded, inscribed. You say, well, there you have it, Pastor Doug. It's an engraving in the forehead. No, when God tells us about the new covenant, he says, I will write my words. I will engrave my words on your heart. That is clearly a symbol. The word tattoo in the Greek is actually a different word. The ancient Greek word for tattoo is derma styxia. And that means derma, we know dermatologist, it means skin, it means in the skin, a stigma. They would have used a different word if it was a tattoo. They didn't use that word. They used the same kind of word to say engraving in the heart, in the forehead, in the hand, meeting in the actions. Let me give you a few more verses. I quoted two from Deuteronomy. Let's go to Exodus chapter 13. He said, it shall be assigned to you on your hand and a memorial between your eyes. There you have it again, in the hand and in the forehead. Go to Exodus 13, verse 16. It shall be as a sign on your hand and as frontlets between your eyes, for by strength of hand the Lord has brought us out of the land of Egypt. This is just the Hebrew way of saying it's to be close to you. It's to be in your actions. It's to be in your thoughts. If you look again, Proverbs, Solomon puts it this way. Proverbs 3, 3. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. He's talking about the principles of mercy and truth. Bind them around your neck. Well, how do you tie mercy around your neck? Write them on the tables of your heart. Does that mean literally? Or again, is it using figure of speech? Proverbs 7, verse 3. And these are just two of many. Bind them on your fingers. Now, there are some Orthodox Jews that they literally have phylacteries where they tie little sections of Scripture to their wrists or they hang them on their foreheads. That was not what the Lord wanted them to do. You know, you can have the Scripture tied to your hand and kill somebody. He wants it in your actions, not just the physical visible symbol on the outside. So when you read in Genesis, let the Bible interpret the Bible. Cain sinned. He broke God's law because he would not worship the way that he was commanded to worship in sacrificing a lamb. He did it his own way. He got angry and he killed his brother because Abel worshiped the way God said he should worship. There was a disagreement over worship. One persecuted the other, killed his brother. A mark was placed on Cain. Genesis 4:15. the Lord set a mark on Cain lest anyone finding him should kill him. Cain did not have a computer chip. Cain did not have a tattoo in his forehead. It means that there was some distinguishing difference that future generations would see about Cain in his actions. And they, basically, they were afraid to touch Cain. I remember reading once about uh, Charles Manson, who was that infamous murderer in the Sharon Tate killings. And when he was convicted and put in prison, he's a little guy, kind of a scrawny little guy, but he had a swastika in his forehead and he claimed to be in league with the devil and he threatened them and saying, if you do anything to me, and telling the other prisoners, the devil's coming after you. And it so scared the other prisoners that they never went anywhere near Charles Manson. He ended up dying of natural causes in prison. So when it talks about this mark on Cain, we don't know exactly what it was, but you can be sure it wasn't a tattoo or a computer chip. But notice, battle over worship, one persecutes the other, one disobeys, one obeys, and a mark is placed on Cain. So when you read in Revelation chapter 7, it talks about everybody getting a mark in Revelation. Everyone in Revelation, saved and lost, gets a mark in the forehead or the hand. Now just stop. Are we thinking that everybody in the last days is going to have a tattoo in their forehead? Or everybody's going to have a computer chip or an RFID card implanted in their head or in their hand? Look at what it says in Revelation 7, verse 2. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, 
the sea or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. Everybody's got something in their forehead. The mystery harlot in Revelation 17, she's got a whole paragraph in her forehead. You're not going to find a woman in the last days that has a whole paragraph in her forehead. It is a symbol for this apostate church in the last days, but it's in the forehead. By the way, Jezebel, when she died, who was this wicked Old Testament queen who persecuted God's prophets, she was thrown out of the window and the dogs ate all of her except her head and her hands. The forehead and the hand, that was interesting. How did Goliath come down? A stone in the forehead. The Bible is telling us that this is saying that this is how we defeat the enemy through the word of God, the rock of God's word in the forehead defeats the enemy. So here it says that they've got a mark that saves them, the redeemed, also in their forehead. It's the seal of God. Look in Ezekiel 9, and this is really, I think, a great summary verse for this. Now the glory of the God of Israel had gone up from the cherub where it had been to the threshold of the temple. And he called to the man clothed with linen who had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said to him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of the men. This is an angel using some heavenly inkhorn. It's not a mark that's going to be seen by men, but it's a mark that God sees. Put a mark on the forehead of the men who sigh and cry over all the abominations that are done within it. This is a good mark. The Bible tells us in the next verse, then he tells the angels of destruction to go through the land of Israel and Jerusalem and utterly slay young and old men and women, anybody who does not have the saving mark. They need the mark of the angel or they're destroyed. In the last days, we need the seal of God in our foreheads or we're destroyed. So what is it talking about when it says this? Hebrews 8 verse 10, for the new covenant, and by the way, Hebrews is quoting Jeremiah chapter 33. He says, for this is the covenant that I'll make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts, in the mind and in the heart. I'll be their God and they will be my people. So if we've got the law of God in our heart and in our minds, it'll be in our hands and our actions. Very simply, friends, in the last days, it's telling us that this is what we need. We need the law of God written in our hearts, loving the Lord with all of our heart, loving our neighbor, that we're obeying the commandments of God. Look in Revelation 14, 1. I looked and behold, a lamb standing on Mount Zion and with him 144,000 having his father's name written on their foreheads. This is the redeemed. These are symbols, friends, but you're probably wondering, well, what do these symbols mean? Well, it's connected with worship. The Bible says those who do not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And so maybe you'd like to know more about what is this mark? I'd like to encourage you, go to the link underneath the screen right here in the descriptions. You're going to see a link that'll take you to a video and it talks more specifically about what is the mark of the beast. But I think you understand now regarding in the hand and in the forehead, the mark of the beast is not literal. It's not a tattoo. We need to understand this. Friends, I pray you've been blessed. I hope that you'll click that you like this. Do it right now and that you'll share this with your friends and subscribe.
Let's welcome everyone from the lessons discussion. Let us uh, start our song service. Hymn number 511. I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. I know not why God's wondrous grace. Let's sing. I know not why God's wondrous grace to me he has made known. No, I unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for his own. But I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against the day. I know not how this saving faith to me he did impart. No, how believing in his word wrought peace within my heart. But I know I have believed and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed. And to him against the dead, I know not how the sing men of sin, revealing Jesus through the word, creating faith in him. But I know I have believed and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against the day. I know not when my Lord may come at night on noon defer, nor if I walk the veil with him, or meet him in the end. But I know I have believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against the day. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. I want to welcome everyone from the lesson discussion. And I believe that the Lord has been with you. And the Lord has spoken to you through that session of uh, Bible discussion and lesson discussion. We're going to do a song service for at least 15 minutes. 
before we go into the divine hour. Today we have Holy Communion. What do we say, church? Mm. What do we say, church? Amen. Amen. I want a lively church. We have come to worship our God who is alive. And also let us be alive. Amen. Mm. Yes. I've been joined by Edwin and uh, and Joycelyn. We're going to sing My Faith Has Found a Resting Place, hymn number 523. Five to three. My faith has found a resting place, not in a man made creed. I trust the ever living one that he for me will plead. I need no other evidence, I need no other plea. Died and rose again for me. And now for me, that Jesus saves, this says my fears and doubt. A sinful soul, I come to him, he will not cast me out. I need no Salvation through his blood. I need no other evidence. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. The great physician heals the sick. The lost he came to save. For me his precious blood is shed. For me his life he gave. I need no other evidence. I need no other plea. It is enough the Jesus died and rose again for me. Five to six, because he lives. Five to six. Five hundred and twenty six, because he lives. We are not singing. Most of us are not singing in the congregation. Let us not get too holy that we cannot sing. Let us sing, praising our God, the fact that we are going to be partaking of uh, the blood and the body. Oh, 
attentive son. They called him Jesus. He came to die. Heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives, but greater still, the calm assurance this child can face and certain days because he Sabbath. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, 4:76. And the congregation sing for the second stanza. Days are filled with sorrow. is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very Jesus is very near. Troubled soul, the Savior can see. Every heart can see. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Without the instrument, the congregation is going to do the chorus. Without the instrument, but as a leader at Calvary, let's do the chorus one more time. Hello? I leave you. All right. 
without the instrument, let's sing powerfully. But in the lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. 538, guide me all, thou great Jehovah. Five six nine, pass me not, or you enter Savior. Five six nine. Trust 
for singing beautifully. We are going to sing him six to five higher ground. Six hundred and twenty five higher ground. Sing on. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath once again. Love God, love each other. Reach out, not I, but Christ. Amen. Well, I thank the Lord for his beautiful morning, for having brought us to come and worship him in his temple. Uh, this morning, I would like to 
read unto you our announcements. I'll start by informing all FSG heads. I believe they're all here. All the five FSG heads, are we present? Today we seem to be a smaller number. There are some I do not see. But in the afternoon after lunch, the personal ministry's uh, leader wants to meet all the FSG leaders. So please be around. Uh, don't be absent. If in case your leader is not present, you have to you deal. You can delegate someone or someone from your group if you realize your leader is not uh, present today, so you can be a representative in that brief meeting. And then uh, on the 14th of April, there shall be the launching of the English Churches Central Zone. Amen. And there are different zones within Central Uganda Conference. And uh, particularly this time around, they are creating a separate zone for the English church congregations. Amen? So on the 14th of April, uh, it will be a Sunday. So all church board officials, all elders, uh, you're reminded to be present at Bunga Central Church. So be there. Our pastors also ex extended this call. Let's not absent ourselves, but be present for that particular meeting as the central zone for the English congregations is being uh, launched. And uh, this coming, this term one holidays, that will be from the 13th to the 17th of May, 2024. We shall have a very wonderful pro program from the ch children ministries. Amen? And this is uh, the vacation Bible school. So some of you may have missed a chance in, in your childhood. <laughs> Don't let this chance pass by your children. Eh? Let your children come and attend the Vacation Bible School. It is termed the Thunder Island Vacation Bible School. Eh? There are lots of things to study, things, lots of things to know. And uh, the theme here says, where Jesus is always with me. Where Jesus is always with me. I want to extend a uh, thanks to the development committee or the development department for spearheading the church land drive. And uh, particularly this time around, from uh, the month of April to the month of June, we shall be having what we call deputy chief builders. Are we aware about this term, deputy chief builders? I believe it was well explained by the development leader. Or what we call usually in the other congregations, Omgenyuachi, Wawike. So if you desire to be a deputy uh, chief builder, please reach out to the church development officer, Elder Samson Rahire. His WhatsApp number is on page number six and uh, express your interest in taking on this drive. Of course, not, it, it won't be only you to do so, but you'll be the leader in that perspective. You can rally other friends to help you out in uh, that arrangement. Amen? And today, the family of Victorious is leading through the worship service, and they have prepared a very beautiful lunch. Don't go away uh, during that particular ministry. And uh, to remind us today, to those who didn't come prepared, it's a Holy Communion Sabbath. Let's prepare our hearts for that uh, service. And uh, come May, that will be uh, the World Adventurer Day. We shall be led by the adventurers Benaya and Jordan. That's uh, World Adventurer. The World Adventurer Day happens every May. Uh, and uh, this time around, we have a theme known as Jesus Knows. He takes care of you. And we shall be led by the, the adventurers the old day. So make sure your child doesn't miss out for that particular day to be part of the other children who will be leading us through the service. And uh, we have the Pan-African Youth Congress. Just to remind us, don't forget to register for the Pan-African Youth Congress happening in Nigeria. That's at Babcock University. And our deadline is still in April, which this, this very coming month. So the, de the details of registration, you'll find them on page number eight. The deadline is April 15th, 2024. So if you want to attend, please be present. And uh, 
I'm seeing here the Myers target is to send at least 10 delegates to Nigeria. You do want to be part of the 10. I believe the 10 are not yet full. <laughs> but if you want to be part of the 10, or even more if possible, God can still provide for our needs. So be present and uh, represent uh, Myers at the Pan-African Youth Congress. S and uh, let's continue to pray for our friends who are not well. That's, that includes... Uh, our sister Diana Barbiria, who is not well, still her mother, the sister to, I'm uh, sorry, the mother to ba Diana Barbiria is still not well. She's uh, battling with a wound on her leg, but we thank God that she's improving. Let's continue to put her in prayers. And also Moses, the son to our friend and sister Monica, is not well. They, they've been to hospital this week, so let's continue praying for them. Now, to remind all of us, this year, every year, we have what is known as the camp meeting, right? We have camp meeting this year from the 25th of August to the 31st. So, camp meeting comes uh, for us to revive and refresh our relationship with Jesus Christ. So, let's endeavor to see that Emmaus attends in big numbers this time around. You realize that Chira Central District has only how many churches? Three, right? That's Emmaus. Uh, East Kampala and Mount Olives. So, camp meeting is going to still happen at Bogema University. That's from the 25th to the 31st. And each, fami each family was given a goal. Remember, the camp, meeting exp uh, op the camp meeting expenses still come down to us because they're the, the very funders of camp meeting. So, every family was given a what? A goal. And uh, as a Myers, maybe just to remind us our goals, these are five families. The family of Philadelphia has a goal, allocation of four million Uganda shillings, and they've so far collected 55,000. <laughs> Amen? So how much is that left? You've so far contributed 1.38%. And the family of Faith Mount has a goal of two million Uganda shillings, and that you've so far collected 15,000 Uganda shillings. Amen? And I believe by, at least by June or July, we shall have cleared all the what? The balances. The family of Victorias has a goal of 2 million Uganda shillings, and they've so far collected 34,500. So, uh, Victorias, please, uh, let's work on that to ensure that we finish this time around in time. <laughs> I can see Elder Samson laughing at, uh, at me. <laughs> But Victoria, I believe we shall finish this goal in time. Redemption, you have a goal of 1.5 million. And Gilead, you have a goal of 1.5 million. And both families have so far collected zero. So I believe Victoria, rather Gilead and Redemption, by July, we shall have completed our what? A goal. All this is in a way to say that FIS as a church is well represented and supports come meeting, not only in funds, but in attendance. So let's, once registration kickstarts, please ensure to see that. You attend. And lastly, to remind all of us is that um, let's continue supporting the church operating expenses. There are many things that are done while at church, for example, seeing the streaming services. Those consume funds. So let's support, support the local church budget. Let's support. There's a special slot for each operating expenses on your envelopes. Let's put some monies to ensure that we support our church in terms of running the daily business. And uh, the children's chapel, this uh, next Sabbath will be the 6th of April. And they always have a family that supports the children. So the family of Elder and Mrs. Chiwanuka shall be the parents in the children's chapel. I didn't, uh, for the teachers, that will be communicated at a later time. But next Sabbath, the family of Mr. and Mrs. Chiwanuka, please support the children's ministry with your presence. May God bless you as you continue to worship him in truth and in spirit. Him to name for power in the blood.
Would you be freed from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free? From your passion and pride, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary side, there's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of oh, the land. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. 306, draw me nearer. There's a way we have become so called after the announcement. 306. Let us sing with strength. I am thine, O Lord. I have had thy voice and it's all thy love to me. That I long to Faith of 
of our fathers, 304. Faith of our fathers living still. We go. Faith of our fathers living still. In spite of dungeon fire and sword. Oh, how our hearts beat high with joy. Whenever we hear the glorious word. Faith of our fathers, holy faith. We will be true to thee till death. Our fathers chained in prisons died. We're still in heart and conscious free. How sweet would be the children's fate if they like them could die for thee. Faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. Faith of our fathers, we will love both friends and poor in all our strife and preach thee to us love knows how by kindly words and virtuous wife faith of our fathers holy faith we will be true to thee till death happy sabbath Happy Sabbath. Lead me to Calvary 317. 317, the projection team. Congregation.
As we welcome the pulpit team, I kindly request that we all rise up for our entry to holy ground. Sabbath Church. Let us open our bulletins on page four and we have our call to worship. Psalms 121, verse 5 to 8. It says, The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shed at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. to the Mighty Heavenly Father, once again we come before you as sinful human beings in need of your grace. And Lord, as we come to you this Sabbath morning, and as, as we come to commemorate your death and resurrection, we ask that you be with us. 
we ask that you may hear our prayers and thanksgiving and that you may send your Holy Spirit to be among us. In Jesus' name we pray. Happy Sabbath, Amayas. Smile, Jesus loves you. But you're not smiling. <laughs> Did you just scrub it? <laughs> All right, smile, Jesus loves you. All right, turn to your neighbor. I'm just requesting. You turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, smile, Jesus loves you. And you're welcome for this Sabbath. All right. Ah, I like the way you're all smart for this ceremony. The ceremony where we get back uh, in good relationship with our... We renew, actually, our relationship with God. The Holy Communion, right? Yeah, it's a very good um, and blessed Sabbath that we're having That's this ceremony. And... I want you to be blessed on this Sabbath. Yes. Uh, right uh, today on the 30th of March, right? Yes, 2024. Uh, we have visitors. I know there are people who have just seen me today, but you are members of Myers, And I'm also seeing you for the first time. <laughs> but... In our book today, we are having uh, four visitors that have uh, gotten the chance to write in the book of God. You know, the registration book of God. <laughs> you know, when you get this opportunity, then you count yourself lucky, right? Because <laughs> you're already registered automatically. All right, so uh, the first person now. So when I read you, please you write, uh, stand, right? Uh, the first person we have today as our visitor is Mohindo uh, Justin. Mohindo Justin. Amen. 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 Right. Uh, the next one is Abalo Masi. Amen. Amen. Right. Thank you for coming. Uh, the next one is Babidye uh, Dauren Glory. Babilie, Babidi, where are you? She has told us God is good. Maybe she wants to surprise us. I don't know, but she will come and we shall see her. All right, we have Alice Tusuvida from Bugolovi. And she, he's, she's saying, sorry, God is good. And all the time. All right. Uh, getting back to the pulpit, Tim, uh, I want to remind you that today you are blessed that the people in front of you today serving are the people of a uh, victorious family, right? Yes. And uh, the name itself can explain everything. Victorious, full stop. Don't add on explanations. I tell you what. The name itself is self-explanatory. You're right. So uh, you're only having victory up here. <laughs> All right. So uh, me speaking, um, uh, Peter Kefas Lubega, and the gentleman who uh, called the cult worship uh, is Jared Manzi. Yes, the young servant of God. Then... We have a sister, and she is called Karen Chitengo. Yeah, I like the, the, the other name. It's very strong, eh? Chitengo. <laughs> All right. Uh, and we are blessed with our preacher and our elder, Elder Chuanka Jerry. 
Yes, we shall see his service when his time comes. I, I don't know, my, my visitors, did I, did I make you stand for so long? Please stand again. Because at Emmaus, there is a way we, uh, we welcome our visitors. And I don't know, have they received their gifts today? <laughs> All right, okay, I will request our choristers to come and... Leaning on the everlasting arms What a blessedness, what a peace is mine Leaning on the everlasting arms Leaning, leaning Save you from all This is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. We remain standing and we do our opening song, 198, and can it be? 198, the projecting team. should gain an interest in the Savior's blood. Died he for me who caused his pain, for me who him to death pursued. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, should die for me. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldest die for me? He left his father's throne above, so free, so infinite his grace, emptied himself of all bad love and led for Adam's helpless rest. Tis must be only man and free for oh my God it found out me amazing love how can it be that the Bound in sin and nature's night, thy night I fuse the quickening red. I rock the dungeon flamed with light. My chance fell off, my heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed. Amazing love, how 
Our kind and gracious, loving Father in heaven, we thank you for the gifts of life as we are worshiping you in this session. Bless us, our faith, living and trusting in your holy name. Amen. We are going to give back to God through the tithes and the offerings. So I request the deacon and the deaconess to stand up and we have a word of prayer. Kind and gracious, loving Father, as we are going to give back unto you through the tithes and offerings, bless us, our faith, living and trusting in your holy name. Amen. We shall have the Matson family for a special item. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, and I heard it first on the radio. This love of God, so rich and strong, shall be the same. An angel song, and I heard it first on the radio. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, the lost and lonely can be found, and grace can even save a wretch. Like me, no other love could make a way 
had it first on the radio. Jesus came and rescued me, and I heard it first on the radio. Alas, and did my Savior bleed that captive spirits could be free? And I heard it first on the radio. My soul has found a resting place until I meet him face to face. And I heard it first on the radio. Special thanksgiving. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that you've enabled us to return the tithes and offerings unto you. Some of us haven't been able. May you enable us. May you enable us next time. We come before you and ask you that you forgive us all our sins. We pray to the preacher into thy hands. May we listen to what you've told him to tell us. Heal those in hospitals at home and anywhere else that we may not think about. Bless us, O Lord. May your light shine upon us. And we also put those ones who are going through different challenges in life. 
may you be a father to them. I've prayed, believing, and trusting in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church. Let's open our Bibles. So reading comes from the book of Luke. Verse 22. Chapter 19. It, it's it says, and he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave unto them saying, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. I will also invite the Matson family to come and give us a special scene. When I saw the cleansing fountain open wide for all my sin, I obey the Spirit's wooing when he said, Will thou be clean? people for his blood can 
wash away each stain. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I'm so glad he took me in. He is forgiven my transgression. He has cleansed my heart from sin. Oh, praise him. I will praise him. Praise him. I will praise him. Praise the Lamb for sin and slay. Wash away each day. I will praise him. Praise him. I will praise him. Praise the Lamb for sin and slain. Give him glory, all the people. Uh, the traditional way. Happy Sabbath. Uh, the traditional way. Happy Sabbath. Tell me happy day of rest. Happy Sabbath. And happy day of rest. Okay, the Mayas way. Happy Sabbath. Yes, um, thank you the Madison family and thank you everybody. I'm told nobody can just join that family unless you are from the Madison family. Not so? So it's a bloodline kind of stuff. But thank you. I think you have golden voices. And uh, the only way to test a musician is to give them the dry mics. Many musicians uh, like miming. Actually, I don't like miming. Eh? They bring a CD here and they start miming. We can actually watch that when we are at home on the internet. But here we need the real voices. May God bless you. I'm uh, delighted um, to be here. I think um, for the first time while um, presiding over this uh, very important church ceremony that we're going to partake. I welcome uh, the elders of this church. Elders, could you wave uh, to me? Yes, uh, Elder Calvin and Elder Samson. Where is uh, Kephas? Yeah. Elder Sabwe, you're most welcome. Uh, I welcome all the department of, of this church, departmentals. You also can wave, wave to us, departmentals, if you have any department. Yes, uh, the deaconary, the health, and uh, music. May God bless you. Then I welcome generally the entire church. What do we say? Yeah. In a special way, um, may I see the visitors who have visited us for the first time. Oh, may you just raise up once again and we, we say special thanks to you, if you don't mind. I will permit uh, the neighbors to give them a very great hug, if you can, please. Have you ever been to Emmaus? Yes. Have you ever been to Emmaus? Yes. Where the people sing hallelujah. Where the people sing hallelujah. 
We are one family, brothers and sisters, children of the... We are the family, brothers and sisters, children of the Lord. Indeed, we are a family. As our notion goes, love God, reach out, a planning meeting at Bunga Central Church, that is on Monday. But that is for uh, each first elder of the church. So the first elder of this church is informed uh, to, to participate. What do you say? You want the bad news? Uh, we don't have bad news on Sabbath. It's always what? It's always good news. All right, because um, of time, we shall humble ourselves and pray. We come before you, mighty Father, sinful as we are. May you make they have their issues to reconcile, uh, but it is only for married, uh, for married couples. So anybody who is unable to be with us, but is in our family, for example, those that are sick, uh, those that are unable to move, we can arrange special, make a special arrangement to reach out to them through the deaconary department and they practice the Holy Communion. By tradition, uh, the church celebrates it, I mean commemorates it every quarter, but it can be even more than that, depending on the need, but at least it should happen once a quarter. Now, um, this ordinance of the... Um, Lord's Supper has emblems. We can call them symbols. And the cardinal ones are the symbol of the bread and the symbol of the, the wine. Okay? So, um, read, read with me. Maybe you can get a first reader. In the book of John, chapter 6, uh, from verse 48. The book of John, chapter 6, from verse 48. You mind getting a microphone? It says, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert, but they died. But the bread that comes down from heaven is such a kind that whoever eats it will not die. I am the living bread that, come, that came down from heaven. If anyone eats the bre this bread, he will live forever. The bread that I will give him is my flesh which I give so that the world may live. This started... Um, 52, this, yeah, continue. Let's follow up in our Bibles, yeah. This started an angry, an angry argument among them. How can this man give us the, his flesh to eat? They asked. Jesus said to them, I am telling you the truth. If you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood you will not have the life in yourselves. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I raise them to the life on the last day. For my flesh is the real food, my blood is the real drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood live in me, and I live in them. The living Father sent me... Uh, you can stop there, you can read in your free time up to verse um, 68. But God, uh, Jesus is trying to emphasize the importance of eating his body, okay? 
So um, we are going to look at it um, in, a, in a little while. But um, these are symbols, and they have very important significance in the Christian faith. So uh, Jesus says in 53, I tell you most solemnly, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. And you know, the, one of the statements, that cardinal statements that Jesus came with says, I am the way, John 14, I am the life and the what? And says, nobody comes to the Father. These are very absolute statements. The same Jesus, he says, because the Jews were, started arguing with one another, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Which people eat flesh? The cannibals. Is he a cannibal? Then Jesus is trying to expound to them that actually this is a very important symbol. And somewhere um, we read um, in um, verse 49 that your fathers ate the manna in the desert and they are dead. That means however much this manna was coming down from heaven, but it, it wasn't a perfect kind of food. But Jesus is trying to tell us that his body is the perfect kind of food that gives you eternal life. Some things we can't comprehend, but we just have to believe. And then it says, he eat, uh, 56, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me. And I live in him. Okay, when you, when you, when you look at the color of the, of the juice, of the grape, it looks like blood, okay? It's a symbol. And um, if you eat the flesh and drink the blood of Christ, then it says, as I who am sent by the living Father, myself draw life from the Father. So whoever eats, my, eats me will draw life from me. These are very cardinal statements. So uh, the, the ceremony we are going to, the ordinance we are going to uh, participate in, is a very solemn ordinance that needs seriousness, needs the concentration and reflection because it is a symbolic to eternal life. And Jesus says, whenever you will do it, you will be remembering my death and what? Resurrection. Now, how did this ceremony come to be? We'll drive briefly in Exodus chapter 16. Briefly, uh, from verse 1. Obviously, this is the story of the Passover, but we are just going to, uh, to see glimpses, then uh, I will shed more light. Please, you can read. Exodus chapter 16, from verse 1. If you don't want to sleep, always be active in church. Get a notebook, get a pen, Okay? But if you're passive, definitely you'll sleep. I learned this well while I, was, while I was in P7. They told us, if you come to church, come with what? A pen. Because other, other regions say they have gone to study. Bagenze Kolachi, Usoma, so we have come to study. Please read on. It says, the whole Israelite community, say, uh, the whole Israel community set out from Elim. And on the 15th day of the second month, after they had left Egypt, they came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai. There, there in the desert, they all complained to Moses and Aaron and said to them, We wish that the Lord had killed us in, the Egypt, in Egypt. There we could at least, at least sit down and eat meat as such, as much as food as we wanted. But you have brought us out, in, 
out out you have brought us out into into this desert and starve us all to death the lord said to moses now i am bringing to make food drain down from the sky for all of you the people must go out every day and gather enough for the day in this way i can test them to find out if they will follow all right uh, thank you uh, because of time in your free time you read until verse 36 okay the story of when they complained about the bread um, and, the, and, and, and the, the food, then God rains them the food from what? You know, God is trying to tell us through this story that it's the God who feeds us, okay? It's the God who sustains us. And uh, if, you worship, if you believe you worship a God who can rain food from heaven, really, guys, why can't we worship the only true God? Because what does that one mean? Somebody who can give you food, miraculously, can do anything to you. Uh, this very same God, in the Passover story, you know, they had been in slavery for 400 years. And their minds had been corrupted. But, you know the story. The ultimate one was the death of the firstborns. But the angel comes and passes over them. That's why the ceremony was called what? Passover. Now, this is the very ceremony when uh, the Last Supper was being comm commemorated by Jesus Christ. This was a very exact period because every year all Jews would go to Jerusalem to remember the day. Now, the holy day uh, in, in Israel is called Pesach. Pesach is uh, P-E-S-A-C-H. In English, we call it Passover. Now, uh, this falls on the Hebrew calendar dates of Nisan. Uh, this is uh, from the 15th to 22nd. Nisan um, what is what we call in our current reckoning, April, okay? That's why I say this period has a lot, this period of April, sometimes it is um, from the mid of March, to around mid of April, you find which calendar are we using? We got it. So in the Julian calendar, it's very important because um, in the reckoning, that's why you see when in the Gregorian Christmas falls on what? 25th. But Julian calendar, when does Christmas fall? January around maybe the first or second week. You getting it, eh? So it is all the same period. So uh, this 2024 Pesach um, will begin uh, before sundown on Monday, April 22nd, 2022. So in Israel, this very ceremony will begin on what? Sundown, just as we record. Monday, April 20, what? 22nd. You know, for them, they still practice that. And ends after nightfall on April 30th, 2024. So Passover is a Jewish celebrate, uh, celebrated ordinance since at least the 5th century BCE. That's before Christ's what? Era. So in every Jew, it is mandatory not to forget this day. Because if it wasn't for the Lord's angel to pass over their households, all of them would have been what? Exterminated. Actually, there wouldn't be any Jewish nation. Typically, it's associated with the tradition of Moses leading the Israel out of Egypt. The festival was originally celebrated on the 14th of Nisan. I've told you that month. Now, as Christians... We were also in slaves, slavery, okay? And because of God's mercy, he also, his, his angel passed over us, not so? And as such, he sent Christ. That's, our, that's now that's our, our angel, okay? And he delivered us, he delivered us from sin. So as such, we are mandated, it is not... Uh, 
debatable. Just as the Israelites celebrate Pesach, we also have to celebrate the pass, the Lord's Supper. It was now changed to the what? The Lord's Supper. Things to note. There's what we call the upper room experience. Here we have the choir, a, a, a full choir called what? Which, which is the upper what? Room. Now, take note of this. You are sleeping. Okay? There is somebody. There is someone. Tell your neighbor, there is someone. There is someone. Who had provided a pitcher of water. That somebody is not named... Thank you. There was a basin and a towel for the customary foot washing. But no one wanted to perform the menu task. There is somebody who saw it incumbent, as per the tradition, that they were hosting a very important guest, Jesus and his disciples, to prepare the water for the foot washing. In church, there's somebody. There's somebody. There are always some people. There's always some people. You say, there's always somebody in the church who is not noticed, but is very important. So God always has that somebody. Come again. <laughs> Will you be that somebody? To know that there is a very important person, that's Jesus Christ. And he do things without being noticed. What did he do? Preparing a pitcher of water. Hi. Our English here may not be... No. Okay, let's say... Okay, it is like Akasumbi, okay? A jar. Oh, thank you. That's our English today, okay? A jar of what? Water. And what? A basin. Now that's somebody. I believe this was in part, maybe, I don't know whether it's part of, it was somebody of the household. Oh, come again. Ah, come. Give a man to doctor. And what? Chapati and the what? And the wine. Now, But the, the most sorrowful thing is but no one wanted to perform the menu task. Because according to the tradition you know they were putting on lugabire, sandals, okay? So in their tradition remember as I tell you when you come to church you either get a blessing or curse. That's true. So ensure that uh, you get a blessing today. In their tradition, I was saying, it was in their customs to always have water, a towel, and a pitcher. So that any sojourner who comes in, who has ever been in a desert, a country, a desert country? <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, Semiari, South Sudan, you know it. Anybody who has been to Sudan, Egypt? Saudi Arabia, Dubai, you know how hot the temperatures are. But not only being hot, but also what? But I believe there is a science, doctors will tell us. They tell us when you're bathing, start from the feet, okay? Then come. And uh, some years ago, the, the government just banned it, but we, had, we used to have what you call ref reflexiology. They used to do some this kind of massage in your feet. And the people say that there are nerves, or nerve endings, for all important body organs that are connected to the feet. They know where to, mas to massage if it's an eye, 
the way it massage you, whether it is whether if it's a heart. So I'm, I'm trying to relate the symbolism, okay, of the feet. So washing, a foot washing, is so cardinal that it has, it goes beyond the obvious. Because once you go into science, it has also its own benefits. But believe me, besides that, it was a gesture of humility. Um, what other adjective can I use? A gesture of composure. It was a gesture. Give me English, English words. Come again. Coming down to earth. What other word? Meekness. Lowering yourself. Uh, I was reading some book about uh, a certain uh, tribe. Uh, one of the enemies, I don't know that it was the Hittites or what, or the Sodomites, but um, they could tramp onto your enemy um, when, when they, they arrested, I mean, in the war, when they were maybe the, the prisoners of war. So it was customary to, you know, you have to step on their, on their head eh, to show that you are the king. So, um, unfortunately, among us, the 12 disciples, among us, the 12 what? Disciples. No one wanted to do, to do this manual what? Job. Because it's a job that uh, made you stoop too low. And they're all seated on the table. Sometimes um, humanity, we don't want to, con is it condense? To stoop low? I'm forgetting, I'm, I'm forgetting the real hard, I mean the simple, simple terms to use. But because of their pride and arrogance, nobody really felt that they need to, to wash their master's feet and themselves. But Jesus took it up. You know, they, uh, so then he stooped down and washed their feet. That was number one. Someone provided what? A picture. Number two, there was too much jealousy. Too much jealousy was harbored against each other. This made Jesus' heart sad. So among the 12 disciples, there was too much what? Because all of them had uh, different intentions. You know, when we come to church, people have different what? Some people have a good, good intentions, but others, they may take that as, why is he doing this? Why is he close, close to the master than I myself? Then they were always arguing. <laughs> let's read uh, let's read Luke 22 verse 24 Luke 22 verse 24 as we are coming to a close please let's read yes read an argument broke out among the disciples uh -huh. As to which one of them should be thought as the greatest. Can, can you, okay, look, it's Luke chapter 22, verse 24. Read. Mm. An judgment broke out among the disciples uh -huh. as to which one of them should be thought of the greatest. Can you believe? You know what they call an argument in English? Eh? Yeah? Yes. So, an argument, really. Read it again. Read it again. An argument broke out among the disciples as to which one of them should be thought of the greatest. My version says, a dispute arose also between them about we should be reckoned the greatest. Can you believe these are disciples and they're busy fighting of who should be what? Because their thinking was in the earthly kingdom. Maybe when Jesus becomes the king, will be the prime minister, could be the means of finance and things like that. 
So they were easy. They were always on contention. So this this is this uh, sad made made Jesus' heart sad. But also this comes to us. Why do we come to church? You reflect and say, why do you come to church? Why do you follow Jesus? Some people followed Jesus because they would they thought they could get positions. Okay? Some people followed Jesus, like uh, Judas, because of economic what? Gain. Because he was a very influential person. So the question to me and you is, why do we follow Jesus? Why do you allow contentions? If somebody is doing God's work, why don't, they, why don't you support them to do that? Perhaps the Spirit is leading them. Are we together? Why do you feel jealousy over somebody's duties? So we need to, on this Sabbath, we need to reflect the core reasons why we were called. Let us not be the, like the, um, the disciples who represent us. The same thing um, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 1. It's the same thing. At this time, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? What does your verse say? At this time, the disciples came to Jesus asking, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? I believe. Among the stars here, who is the greatest? And maybe the one who... Please, don't, don't mistake me. Eh? I'm just giving examples. Eh? Maybe the one who smiles a lot. Maybe the one who gives more tithe and offerings. The one who sings better or the deacon. Who is the greatest? So, uh, Jesus is telling us to stoop low. Jesus now becomes the servant, you know. Somebody had prepared the preacher, the preacher, knowing that obviously they, these, these are called servants. They are called uh, disciples who are basically servants of, of Jesus. So Jesus stoops low in, Matthew, in John 13, verse 2. I told you if you don't want to sleep, make yourself what? Active. Always be active. Tell your mind, be active. Verse 2 says, they were at supper and the devil had already put it into the mind of Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray him. Verse 4. Read for me verse 4. When he rose from the table and took off his outer garment mm -hmm. and tied a towel around his waist. Then he poured some water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, and dry them with a towel round his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Are you going to wash my feet, Lord? Jesus answered him, You do not understand now what I am doing, but you will understand later. Okay, you, you can stop there. You, you can follow the entire story. So Jesus takes on the role of a servant. And actually, there are many verses... Many saying of Jesus, that connotates to, if you want to be the greatest, then be the what? The least. And it says, uh, the first shall be the last. And the last, then um, if you want to, to, be, to be the first, you have to be a servant. A servant, not a master. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Jesus yearns to eat with the people who hear his voice and open the door. He says like this, in Revelation 3, uh, 20, yes, to those who win the victory, I'll give you the right to sit beside me on my throne, just, uh, just as I have been victorious and now sit by my father 
by my father on his throne. So, he commands his followers to copy him. If then your Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. So he said, if me, just imagine who is the highest here. If the president comes, highly honored, or the Kabaka, because we are in Uganda here. And you see him stooping, Lord, to start washing our feet. And he says, if I've done it, you also ought to do it. And Jesus actually, among his disciples, there was Judas, what? Iscariot. And, um, and Petros, Peter. But nevertheless, he washed them. Does it mind our stance, our Christian stance? Whether um, somebody, you think somebody is not standing right, if you think somebody is a, a devil, Jesus says, wash them, because he did it. Holy Communion replaces Passover festival. This one, you read it in your free time, but Matthew 26 uh, verse 26 to 28, uh, it replaces, yes, the Jews still conduct the Passover, but now for us we have the Lord's Supper. You read also 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 24 to 26. But in this, in this one, we can just read because it's very cardinal, 1 Corinthians 11, where am I? No, Matthew 26. Verse 26, as, uh, now as they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and when he had said the blessing, broke it and gave it to the disciples, take it and eat, he said, this is the body. Then he took a cup, and when he had returned, thanks, he gave it to them, drink all of you from this, he said, for this is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which is to be poured out for many. For, uh, for the forgiveness of the sins. Now, from now on, I tell you, I shall not drink wine until the day I drink the new wine with you in the kingdom of my father. I think some versions say this is the new covenant that I make with you. The ordinance of foot, wo uh, foot washing, Jesus desired to wash away alienation jealousy and pride from their hearts because nobody wanted to do the the foot washing say let me do it and wash away the jealous and what my friend jealousy is too bad and if you have it ask God to to give you a clean heart but also pride these two things move together okay Pride and arrogance is also jealousy. What is jealousy? Come again. <laughs> Covetous is bringing another hard term now. Why do you, f yes? Selfish, yes. Why is it him, not I? But also, what, what does arrogance and pride mean? What does it mean to be arrogant and proud? Come again? You are nothing. This is an equalizer. Tell your neighbor, this is an equalizer. <laughs> the Lord's Supper is an equalizer between the highs and the lows. So we get kind of a normal kind of curve. So it's a stabilizer, it's an equalizer in Christ's kingdom. That's why you'll go and you find people who are too high in the worldly reckoning. When you come to church, you can say and, and greet them, hello, how are you? But now you go to their offices. You need to make what? Appointment. So because of the love of Christ, they have been constrained to come. Law. I'm just imagining when I'm uh, 
I'm washing the feet of the Chief Justice. I'm washing the feet of uh, a minister. Hey, Anita Mong and others. So this, but in other places, you can't find that. Even to come and uh, take the Holy Communion, they do it according to your standards. But this church, Christ equalized it. What do we say? So Jesus wanted to uh, wash away the pride and jealousy from their hearts. Pride and self-seeking create dissension and hatred. But all this, Jesus washed out. Why do you have hatred members? Eh? Okay. I'm not, I'm not telling you. Let me, let me tell you myself. Why do I have hatred? Because um, the, 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 the saying goes, love God, love each other, reach out, not what? But still, Jesus sums up the Ten Commandments that love God with all your heart, all your mind and all, all what? Then love what? Whenever as uh, you love thyself. Uh, the desire of ages has a quotation here on page 656. The service of the Lord's Supper is just as holy today as it was when instituted by Jesus Christ. Jesus is still present when this sacred ordinance is celebrated. Let me briefly talk about the unleavened bread and uh, the wine, then we shall depart. The living, I want simple English. Come again. Unfermented. Actually, it means the same, but I want another more simpler. Without yeast. Aha, thank you. Now, there's a reason why the Israelites, when they were uh, going to, to travel, to embark on that journey from Egypt. Go tell them to eat what? Unleavened what? Now, leaven or yeast, I'm not a medical personnel, but it's one of the most common, can I call them microbes? Very stubborn. You can fight bacteria. You can fight... Also, a virus can't go, but you can try to control it. You can try to, to fight amoeba, but fungi is very stubborn. That's why people are struggling with the diseases, uh, skin diseases, it candida, what, what. And some of them are hereditary. That's why in uh, Israelite culture, that even houses that had been... Uh, attacked by this fungi were ordered to be vacated. Okay, they, they, they attributed leprosy and other skin dreaded diseases to fungus, fungi. So, but it is also a symbol of unfaithfulness. I take Maybe, how many are bakers here? Bakers. Okay, let me say, I take five grams of uh, wheat. Eh? Then I put in that yeast. Then it will bulge. And it will look as if it's what? But actually it is what? Very small. So it is a symbol of deceitfulness, unfaithfulness. What other adjective can I use? Dishonesty. That's why when we, once, once we take this bread, God wants us to be honest 
That's why some will say that whoever eats seat and they are not prepared and they in a dishonorable way you may get curses and say that even some of them have died. For example, you partake in this ceremony, you have your known sin. Okay? This ceremony says go and sin. Your sins have been forgiven, but go and sin no more. So if you think you still want that sin, I can advise you don't participate in this. Mnaniskia? Vizuri sana? Kitu ni cha muhimu sana sana. Hakuna kucheza na dhambi. Tuko pamoja? So if you think that known sin, you are not willing to forsake it, don't participate. This is a recommitment we make publicly. Just as baptism is made what? Publicly that I'm recommitting myself unto you. So it is still, it says Jesus is still present when this sacred ordinance is celebrated. So I believe Jesus is among us. So also the, the, the unfermented wine, the grape juice, it also unfermented. It's just the way it is. Plain. The way it is. The Passover wine untouched by fermentation is on the table. These emblems Christ employed to represent his own unblemished sacrifice. You know, Jesus sacrificed a perfect sacrifice without blemish or without spot. Romans 12 says, I beseech you, brothers, brethren, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice, which is what? Holy. So we should, just as Christ offered himself, we should have no fermentation because he's... Um, his body, um, these emblems, his body was, didn't have, it's a perfect sacrifice. Because if we didn't have a perfect sacrifice, then we wouldn't have uh, the atoning of our sins. Nothing corrupted by fermentation, the symbol of sin and death. So those who want yeast so much, even in ordinary life, yeast, yeast is not good for our lives. So the same as it's not good for our lives, it's a symbol of sin and death and could not represent the lamb without blemish and without spot. Neither the wine nor the bread contain elements of fermentation because on the, on the evening of the first day of the Hebrew Passover, all living, all fermentation was done away with. So on that evening, of the day of the Passover, they said, remove all yeast from your households. Can you believe? Right away from your household. So, in a nutshell, the Passover ceremony, or the Lord's Supper, is a commemoration of deliverance from sin. That Christ delivered us from sin, just as he delivered the Israelites from what? See, read Exodus 12, from verse 3 to 8. The Passover's blood applied to the lintel and the doorpost protected the inhabitants from death. The nourishment, its flesh provided, gave them strength to escape from Egypt. So just as the blood that was sprayed on the lintel and the doorpost saved them, and also the food that it gave them strength, the same, so Christ's sacrifice brings liberation from death. Believers are saved through partaking of both his body and blood. So don't say that, what are we doing? We are doing a very cardinal ordinance. The Lord's Supper proclaims that Christ's death on the cross provides our salvation, provided forgiveness and guaranteed, and guaranteed eternal life. How many are sure they will have eternal life? 
Uh, Maureen is not sure that she will have eternal life. But all of us will have eternal life, okay? If you believe in Christ, Jesus. Now, by feeding the 5,000, Jesus revealed the deep significance of his body and blood. He fed them with what? Bread, not so? As the bread he said, Moses did not give you bread from heaven, but my father gave you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. John 6, 32, 35. Jesus says he's the bread. The one that Israel is used to eat. So, eating Christ's flesh and drinking his blood is symbolic language for the assimilation of the word of God through which believers maintain communion with heaven and are enable, enabled to have spiritual life. By the words I speak to you, I spirit and their life of life. So, it is um, a communion. It is an assimilation of the word of God. So, just as we we partake the juice and the bread. We are assimilating the word of God into our lives to prepare us for this, the spiritual life. Somewhere uh, it is said, Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? So this is a, test, a testament that you can live without food. And God, uh, Jesus demonstrated it by fasting for 40 days and uh, 40 nights. But you can live with the word of God. We practice corporate communion. Corporate, that means it is uh, all engulfing. In a world filled with strife and is divisiveness or division, our corporate participation in this celebration contribute to the unity and stability of the church, demonstrating true communion with Christ. So by participating, the saying goes, if you are not with us, those, if you are not with us, then you are against what? It is an allusion of the feast that the communion bread is broken in too many pieces. So we start with one bread, okay? Which is the body of what? Christ. Then that body is broken down in too many what? Pieces. What does it mean? We are diverse, but from, from, from unity, unity and diversity. So Christ is the body, but we break, we are, we are smaller bodies that make up. Quite. That's, that's the essence of breaking up uh, the bread. I'll end with these stories. So if you're sleeping now, wake up. At sunrise of Sunday morning, December 7th, 1941, 350 Japanese warplanes flew through, flew through a mountain, passed over the island of Ohoa, Oahu, that's Japanese, eh? Oahu. Come again? Oahu, yes, somebody knows Japanese there. And rained death and destruction of Pearl Harbor. In your free time, I would urge you to go and uh, watch a movie called Pearl. Pearl Harbor. It is um, it was sheer destruction of American Navy. Eight battleships and ten smaller warships were sunk and put out of commission by these Japanese warplanes. Two hundred American planes were destroyed, and three thousand five hundred eighty-one servicemen were killed. Or wounded. Just imagine 3,581 servicemen were killed. 
The battleship went down in eight minutes. Just eight minutes. And Tom being 177 sailors. So President Franklin, uh, this Roosevelt was the president by then of America, and called the day of the sneak attack a day of infamy. That would be meaning that it would be always remembered for being a bad, unlucky what? Day. The national battle cry with which the United States entered World War II was, remember Pearl Harbor. So when they went to, to this was World War I, because this was 1941, okay? So when they came to in World War II, their um, national battle cry, Op the operation name was, remember what? Pearl Harbor. So the Lord's Supper is, is not a battle cry per se, but it's a call to remember. They remember the devastation that they went through as America. And they came and obviously contributed very greatly to the destruction of the arch enemies who were then the Germans. The second story is a memento. A memento is like um, a commemoration or a souvenir of a, uh, a cherished friend. Now, there was a young man that had been killed in a horrible accident near his home. A memorial service was held at the home, but a parallel memorial service at the same time was held at, at the school, at the college chapel. Friends were asked to bring items to the service that reminded them of the young man. Where the casket would have been placed, tenderly were pictures, school assignments, flowers, his jacket, football, and an assortment of miscellaneous objects that carried more meaning than they had borne just weeks before. So to these college mates, the assignments he did, the, the flowers he loved, and the pictures, the moments they had, uh, they had with him were their memento to remember him. The last story something we need not forget. And we are talking of don't forget, talking about don't forget to remember. Now listen carefully. Early Saturday mo Saturday morning, November twelfth, nineteen eighty six, when most of you weren't yet born, there was a young girl, teenager called Jamie Eastep. She was traveling from her home in Stillwater, that's Oklahoma, to work the morning shift at the restaurant by the interstate. So she was going to work. As she rounded the last curve before she would turn onto Fontage Road, those that have reached the Oklahoma, a car in her lane speedily, speeding at over 90 miles per hour, that's around 144 kilometers per hour, came toward her. So Jamie tried to swerve her car, but could not avoid the oncoming vehicle. She was struck on the driver's side, and the young, vivacious teenager with bright blue eyes, and even a brighter future was killed instantly. The driver of the speeding vehicle his name was called Lucas Jones, was going home from an all-night party with his friends. They were, they were partying the whole night. He was drunk. While thrown from his car at the point of the impact, he walked away from the accident only with scrapes, bruises, and a broken arm. So for him, he survived. Lucas was not a bad 17-year-old Infant, I mean uh, teenager. In fact, he was an honor roll student and a member of the band. People love musicians, okay? 
he was loved. He was on the night simply had too many beers. He had, he had just been invited. And should not have been driving a car. He made a, tra a tragic mistake. Now, at his trial in the courtroom, witnesses testified of Lucas' achievements in the classroom. His service to the community, his kind heart, his church involvement. He was a very good churchgoer. The prosecuting attorney reminded the court that while all of these facts about Lucas may be true, he nevertheless drove a car that exceeded the speed limit while intoxicated and took the life of an innocent victim. So punishment was needed. The court waited in anticipation for the judge's verdict in the case. Now listen. When the judge spoke from his bench, he said to a remorseful Lucas Jones, Lucas, as the witnesses have testified, you are a decent young man, and from your own statement, I realize that you are truly sorry for the crime you have committed. I want to believe that as you, you say, you will never touch alcohol again, but, and there was a long pause. A young innocent girl is dead because of your irresponsibility. And nothing you can do will bring her back. Her friend, her friends and family mourn her loss. I therefore sentence you to two years in the juvenile center. Since you have already spent 16 months, the balance of your time will be eight months. So you had spent 16 months in, 16 months in the jail. And the courtroom from Jamie's family thinking the sentence was not severe enough. The family wasn't contented, okay? And the judge went on. For the rest of your natural life, every year on November 12th, you are to go to the scene where you, you plowed into Jamie's car and think about your actions. Son, I don't want you to ever forget what you have done. I want you to recall your past, your poor judgment, the life that was taken, and your past, and your part in that. And the case was closed. Just as the Jamie's case, we too we have a case to answer because of Jesus' death, he was crucified and died. And as such, whenever we do partake in this ceremony, we remember his death and life. May God be with us. As we sing the last, the first, the first part of the song, lest I forget, I will pray on the last part, then we shall debat, debat for foot washing. Let us use 10 minutes, then we shall be back. We are going to sing it in a slow, slow mode. May we rise up? Just a minute. All right, we are going to sing it in a slow mode. Give us the key. King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn cry.
crown brown lead me to calvary let i forget get I forget thy agony as I forget thy love for me lead me to Calvary Almighty Father lest we forget your atoning sacrifice on the cross May this day be a renewal of our commitment to you. May this day our sins be purged and thrown into the bottom, bottomless pit. May this day be a day for removing all our guilt and fears. And may this day be a day for our renewed communion with you and with each other in Jesus name we pray we can continue with um, the second and other verses may we use like 10 minutes Praise the Lord church. Praise the Lord church. Yes, this is the time we are going to go for our foot washing. The gents are going to use the other side and then the ladies are going to use this side. Yes, so I I am conversant of the fact that there is sunshine but uh uh we will work within that. Amen. Yes, so we have to go faster and then we can come back to the sh- to, to the church. God bless you the marriages you can also utilize either this space or the other space. Let us move now so that we can save time. Daily my cry 
37 redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed how I love to proclaim Rescue the 
Hark the voice of Jesus. Three, six, two.
But give me Jesus. Three to nine. I know whom I have believed. Um. I know not why God's wondrous grace. 
493 fill my cup Like the woman at the well I was seeking For things that could not satisfy Yeah. 